There are many misconceptions about capitalism. Even here in the U.S., many people just don't seem to understand it. I will not cite any report to utilize anything more than the simple definitions of the words to address this, but capitalism is actually a good thing. I must point out that the U.S. capitalism is very weak. It is being usurped by corporatism, and everybody should know this. But what is the difference? Quite a bit. But first note that capitalism and consumerism are actually two sides of the same coin. They work together to complete the system. Now on to the meat of the issue. Corporatism is a system where the corporations hold the power, typically through the buying and bribing of government officials. Politicians and lobby groups in the U.S. are often owned by the corporations. The reason this is important is because the corporations cannot exist without the politicians backing them and without the regulations that give them control. Yes, I did say that regulations are what give corporations power. Corporations are not the same thing as companies. They are similar, but corporations require support from the laws while companies exist within the laws. In a capitalist system, two aspects are important. One aspect is equal access to resources. The other is one that many people do not wish to participate in and is the reason we need the domineering constructs like the FDA and FCC to tell companies how to behave. That concept is consumer responsibility and education. In a purely capitalist system, the consumer has all the power, literally, of which companies survive and which fail. Your money becomes the means to do that. But this means you have to learn what the companies are doing and how they operate to make wise decisions and support the decent companies. People do not want to do this. They also believe that no one wants to do this. So they ask for regulation. Well, regulation leads to corporations, which in turn get their power from the government. Thus, the corporations need only appeal to the politicians. The consumer is no longer important. This is what has happened in the U.S. and why we are now corporatist and not capitalist here. When this happens, equal access to resources is lost and the only corporations, only corporations, have the pull to gain access to resources. This may sound oversimplified, but it's not really. Today we see the negative effects of corporatism. The corporations are gaining strong pulls on rights and prices, allowing them to mark everything up to whatever they want. We see the copyright laws being abused and extended way beyond any reasonable time. We see corporations committing atrocities and being given money from the government to avoid closing when the consumers pull away from them. This is all because of regulations. And don't get me wrong, some regulation is good, but overregulation leads to what we see today, and both sides are only asking for more regulation. Neither of the political powerhouses in the U.S. is even considering coming close to dissolving the oppressive regulations that led to this problem in the first place. So what can we do in the U.S.? Embrace capitalism more and be rid of corporatism. Take the power from the corporations and place it back into the hands of the consumers again. But to do this, we must actually decrease the number of regulations, not increase them. For one thing, leave the environmental regulations alone. Those are not part of the problem. This will get a bunch of people up in arms, but it's true. Most environmental regulations are easy to comply with. The biggest issue are the copyright laws. These are oppressive and destructive to creativity and the market as a whole. Copyright laws ruin competition and destroy any chance for the consumer to choose. However, the problem in the U.S. is more complicated than I can cover. There are more factors to consider. The politicians you are placing into power want more corporatism, all of them. Both Democrats and Republicans are bought and sold by the corporations. That is why whenever a politician comes into the game that, who won't play ball, they shun him almost immediately. I'm not one of those annoying people who will chant Ron Paul at every chance, but he did challenge the status quo. Ron is, is an example of someone different, a bit of a kook, but his heart was in the right place. And if you want to steer from, capital, from corporatism, you need people different from the status quo, even if it means people like Ron Paul. Challenge the system the only way you can. Vote for something different for a change.